Welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be working a little bit in the basement here trying to get a little bit further on this battery project and doing some random stuff like uh, I have a Christmas present sitting around here that I want to mount over here it's a it's a Ryobi tool cabinet um, for having your Ryobi tools nicely on the wall plus I guess I could put something else in it so yeah I, I wanted to do that but also my workbench is just kind of a bit of a mess I have cleaned a little bit before I started the camera but yeah I need to uh, to to tidy up a little bit more I have some batteries here for some old battery projects these are nickel calium oh nick nickel metal hydrate batteries and most of these are really bad but I'm gonna keep a couple around just in case that I get a project where I need some of those and that has happened so um, yeah I, I was just about to measure each of these and find out which ones I should hold on to and which one I should just let go and just go through them and see if there is any voltage on any of them because um, if there's voltage on them they might not be that bad so let's see one volt that's not it's these are 1.2 volt batteries so one volt sitting around for a long yeah this one for example is it's not that great so we might be able to take that away so that one we need to take out uh, so we'll just take some pliers here take the metal off of there so two goodish and one bad here that one is bad and measure along find out well I'm just gonna take the, the bad ones away to start with and then we'll figure out how many we want to keep 0.8 Seven, one, one. It's as good as zero, so we're gonna take that one out as well. These are okay-ish. Yeah, those are not that bad. These came out of my one of. One of these screwdrivers here. Um, there were three of these. Uh, I did a video where I replaced them with a couple of 18650s. Um, these has been depleted for years, so they are, yeah, really bad. So I'm, I have just been keeping them around for filming purposes. I'm gonna get rid of them. And then we have these. Let's check those. How are they doing? One more, 1.1 actually, that was a good one. Good and good. Okay, then we have this last one. Where did that came, come from? That is just below one. So there's a big stack of okay ish, and then there are some bad ish. So these are trash for sure. Okay, so this is the wall mountable cabinet one door that my favorite little brother gave me for christmas quite an expensive piece of equipment that was on my wish list that i got so i'm gonna unwrap this and we're gonna put that on the wall i need to figure out where i put my drill though oh, yeah. i think this is close to a hundred dollars here in denmark it's probably way less everywhere else it always is Ooh, very nice piece of styrofoam. Cool. And how do I get that out? Could we, we, can, we can put it upside down, I'm sure. Maybe. Oh, I can just slide it out here, maybe. Yeah. Cool. Oh, there are some nice pictures on the back of that box that we need to have a look at yeah and on the side yeah this is this is what you can do you can have stuff sitting on the side of it 
and you can have your drills and tools hanging from the bottom of it so i definitely need to s put it in a way so that that i can do that so i can put my tools like that and that's i think that's very neat so uh, very cool i found the the lock uh, or the keys for the lock was in a little bag uh, taped on here yeah you can kind of lock it it's, it's not as if it's any kind of safety well it just takes a few seconds longer to probably just pull that out if you really wanted to but then you can open it and you can take something in there put that away so that it doesn't lock down and you can kind of have your charger sitting in here there's even holes for the wires in there that can come out from each side so that's cool and there's a little ryobi manual in it so nice and there is a um, there's four mounting holes uh, weirdly enough it doesn't come with mounting screws or anything so um, yeah we gotta figure something out there hmm i'll figure something out i found these screws uh there are the old type but i think they will um, they will do the job and i'm gonna use these oh, i forget what these are called but you know what the, they're called so um, you, you help me in the comments but i'm gonna make a hole for that and i think this drill bit will do the trick it's very much not sharp but let's see how far we get um yeah let's let's do that yeah here is me Rawr! shadow on the wall i uh, i headed up here and i found a place where i want to drill the hole um and i need to go in a little bit deeper than this this thing that we don't know what it's called um so let's try that and maybe i should remove the stuff sitting underneath it it's gonna be ever so slightly dusty so let's see ryobi versus wall let's see how far that is oh. i can kind of see it Oh. Hmm. Let's see the screw, the screw, the screw that I was going to be putting in. It's going to be sticking out. Yeah, it's a tiny bit more. And then put that thing in. Yep. Hammer. Let's see if we can get that to go in. And then I'm going to take the screw and persuade it a little bit. There. And we're going to screw that in. Screw that in. With one screw I can put the cabinet up here and I can use a level up. Oh, for crying out loud. Ugh. Guess who's still here? That bloody thing. And as always, it's hungry for attention. So, yeah. Um, we will uh, hit for commercials or something while that thing runs for five to eight minutes but um, I'm gonna hang the cabinet in the meanwhile while that thing uh, runs and make noises or uh, yeah you're probably not gonna be missing anything okay the booster pump is done and um, the cabinet is here I'm just fastening the screws I am um, I'm done drilling and oops It's teasing me. Got it? I'm happy with it now. Ryobi! <laughs> oh, I can have two tools in each slot. That's great. So, some of these I don't use that often. I don't expect um, the soldering iron here will do the. will fit that very well. Soldering iron, it can probably go in here. I was actually planning to put the scope in here. Um, this 
can take oscilloscope um, just to protect it a little bit from dust and stuff. I should probably have some bag to put it in. Might be able to fit one more besides it. Yeah, thanks to my favorite little brother. The video was really to be getting on with this project, the battery bank. I've been reading the comments on my um, yearly tour of my playhouse and a lot of people, a lot of you, were um, was missing the DUI project and the battery project. So um, yeah, I thought that I would do a little bit on that each. So now we have mounted that cabinet and we're gonna be soldering some of these batteries. I have tried with the spot welding thing. To save time, I tried with the spot welding and it has been nothing but a waste of time. And we can start on this one with a repair. I was trying to spot weld here and I actually burned a hole in this battery right there. So we have to replace a battery that is in a bank, which is of course a decent video because I haven't seen anyone do that um, on any channel. I have been thinking about how to do that. So I was spot welding a, um, a metal bracket on here. I punctured this one with the spot welder and we got a very nice bluish blue greenish flame out of it when i did that nothing else happened but it it had that flame and i marked it with a little bit of red tape to mark that i need to do something i need to take that battery out and uh, replace it with another cell of a, of the same capacity so we need to do that that's kind of irritating the spot welder was supposed to to save me time not to create new jobs so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna remove the plastic tabs that holds it into place here and i'm gonna take it out this way and then um, I'm, I'm just gonna put a new cell in that way and we'll be good again and the piece of metal that goes over here is gonna hold that into place together with all the other cells so i am interested in how to do that because i haven't done this before why should i I think we can remove the tape. Can you help me remember which one it was? It's the one with the rust on it now. With more of that plastic gone, I am able to push that out. Oh, there. Oh. Oh dear, oh dear, that's the capacity. We need to read that. 18, one something. What's on here? I think it says 1812. That looks like my handwriting. 1812, we need to find one of that capacity. Okay, looking through cells here, I found one that yeah, I don't want to take all of these out. I don't have to take all day. But I found one that has come out with a capacity of 1870. And I think that's close enough. It's about 50 milliamp hours extra. Yeah, it's fine. So instead of that one, we're putting this one in. Mm, let's see. Hmm, I've actually done that quite good. Let's hope it slides in. It's gonna mess up that, I'm sure, but I'm just gonna polish this ever so slightly to make more room. Let's see if we can persuade it to go in. It's still a tight fit. Yeah, in we are. Cool. I can't see any holes with my bare eyes, but there was acid leaking out of this and I took it off with a piece of paper uh, just when it happened. That was why I marked it. Right now I could have passed it for as being a good one, but I do believe that it is damaged. So um, the this metal strip that I have put on here, well, it breaks when you take it off. It's not worth much afterwards. So you need to put on another piece here. So um, this is the stuff that we are putting on. Um, you buy this from China and it's not that expensive and you buy enough. So we're gonna make a new and you just cut that with a 
pair of scissors. It's, it's kind of a soft metal. Yeah. I do believe that I had made extra strips for this, but at the moment they're nowhere to be found. Weird as fuck. I'm going to be soldering these on and uh, I have the wrong tip on my soldering iron. So I need to need to change that. And this, of course, I had heated it up. So that was kind of stupid. I need a bigger tip to solder this. So we are putting in a bigger tip. Everybody likes a big tip. There. Power on again. Cool. Well, soldering these batteries are usually not that difficult. You, um, well, I do actually have a flux pen. I could, just for the heck of it, give this some flux. It's kind of a, it's, a, ooh, this is nasty. It's a little pin and it has a little pencil at the end and you can kind of put some flux on what you want to solder. There, that should help not get too much oxygen in there. And I'm gonna leave the last four not fluxed, see if it does makes any difference whatsoever. Uh, last time I tried this, I've kind of found that well, it took longer to just apply the flux than it took to get a solder connection without it. So there's a little tip there. The bottom of the battery, the negative side, is the hardest one to solder because there is the most metal there and needs to be heated up. So I'm just I just want it to stick a little bit because when we um, put the metal on it, I need to have the metal stick to it as well. So now, oh, come on, <clears throat> there. So let's, uh, let's try some of the ones that are not fluxed. Yep, got it. Got it. There is flux in the soldering tin as well. Yes. Yep. So let's try this piece of metal here. Um, you can see that it bows. So I'm going to be mounting it in the middle first. Gonna put it on here and I'm going to heat up the two metal, middle things. See if I can get a connection there. And this is where it starts to become quite warm. So I probably need some kind of a screwdriver to And the rest of them are easier. Um, they should just fall into place. I got that done. That was some of these that wasn't soldered on either. They were just fastened in the middle. So uh, this side is totally completed now um, for soldering. Oh, there's a thinky that needs to go. Takes longer than spot welding, uh, but I didn't break anything. So um, the other side, that's where all the fusers are gonna go. So um, I need to put a little tap on each single one of these 140 batteries. A tiny little place where I can fasten the solder. Um, yeah, it's gonna take forever. I'm gonna get it done.
Okay, I completed that. The first solderings took way longer than when I got to the other end. I kind of started to get a, the hang of it. So, I think I better I better do this one as well. I have another bank sitting just here, uh, ready to be soldered the same way, and to get some benefits of um, yeah doing that. I see that I have something here. That we might need to change another cell. This one doesn't look that great, does it? It's all uh, rusted up. We can probably get a better view of that. It's not supposed to look like that. So this bank has not been soldered in place yet, so we could actually take it out this way. I could probably have done that with the other one as well. Uh, but... Yeah. Yeah, I think I have it far enough so that I can take out this cell. Ugh. It's a nasty one. That sucks. But we'll... Um, luckily this hasn't come into production yet, so we'll... Um, find a replacement for it and put that in. So this one has a capacity of 1590, so 1590 milliamp hours. And I'm gonna be putting this one in instead, 1587. So add three milliamp hours less. It's not gonna matter. So um, let's put that in. Should I just measure that to be sure that it is, that it is still good? So multimeter. Minus goes there and plus goes there and we have 4.07. That's awesome. It goes that way. Should we have a number out? We could do that. Cool. And we'll put this down again. Awesome. It was almost as much work uh, pulling this up. It wasn't really much of a difference there. Okay, so I went ahead and I soldered uh, both sides of this. Oops. Like that, just put a little solder joint on each of the cells. It kind of goes faster and faster as, as I'm doing it. I'm sure at some point I get really tired and then it takes longer, but I'm gonna do the metal strips as well so that I can, I wanna see, it needs to be on the other side. I want these batteries to be alike. So this rough material goes up, so the strips goes on this side. So neat metal strips on there. And uh, we'll just, oh, I already put that away. I shouldn't have done that and packed it up nicely. So now I can unpack it again and put in some strips. And um, let's see, how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, we'll cut fourteen strips out of this. Fourteen strips cut. I'm gonna be soldering those on, just like I did well over there. Hopefully this time it's gonna go faster now that I am. Um, kind of gotten a better hang of it. So I fastened all the strips, this this nice metal that um, that connects to the batteries. I've only connected them in the middle to fasten it to where it has to sit. Now I can just warm up the soldering beneath it and wait for it to uh, to attach. Uh, maybe just use the screwdriver to hold it down until the solder cools again. It doesn't take that long this time. So on the other side of the battery banks, we have these uh, copper wires going forth and back and they are kind of connecting two rolls of batteries and there are tiny fuses here, just tiny copper wires that goes up to this 
bus bar and um, yeah I'm gonna be making those as well we're probably gonna cut right about here the video is getting long but um, this is the this is one of those bus bars and it's gonna go somewhere like that between two battery rolls oh one handed is not great okay it needs to be mingled a little bit and it's normal copper wire that I use and I have actually found some on the floor here that I'm gonna be using um, gonna try and get the insulation up there and that's a rather big task irritating work yeah that took forever to get the insulation of that thing it's a uh, it's, it's on that table over here um, I am starting to cut them up um, I'm kind of I'm making them 22 centimeters and I did a jig for them here a couple of years ago when I did this kind of two screws where you take the string and you pull it over those screws and down over some little cutouts down here so you kind of make a um, well the it's a bus bar form here I measured this size I measured this size I added this little bit and then I forgot to measure and add that bit uh, so I have quite a lot of thinkies here that are way too short redo it, it looks like this it's not gonna be enough for to fasten it down in these and uh, I was hoping to actually make it a little bit longer and drill holes into these and yeah Ugh. okay a little bit fewer of them I only need seven for each battery so um, I guess that's enough um, and I did this template uh, where you you put the wire here and uh, I need a couple of thinkies to, to get a really good grip on the ends of the wire make sure that the wire is in the middle here uh, and I need a knee to get this started there and just good yep and I can I straighten these a little bit the ends this one's particularly there and I drill a couple of holes over here and I'm afraid this drill bit isn't too great so it and then this goes in there kind of like that Okay, kind of found that I don't need to, to do both sides at, one, at once, so I'm um, a little bit less awkward. So bend it around, bend it down, and take the other side. There. And just... There. And I replaced the drill bit for one that's a bit sharper and that's a lot easier and we are ready for the next and just make one more so by having that little piece of string going through the plastic I think I'm gonna be able to fasten this a lot better um, so I think I think this is a good thing Okay, so now I'm ready to put in 180 fuses after I do some hot gluing on these and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm gonna think that it's quite enough for this video. We, we, we put on a cabinet on the wall and we um, prepared two batteries that are almost done now. So um, yeah, when I have four batteries done, I can, um, I can connect them to an inverter 
two batteries is not enough for the inverter and the capacity and stuff that I want to do. It could become a, too big of a string on it, so um, yeah, I really need four. I am planning that these battery banks are not going to be delivering very high current. The maximum amount of current that I want to see out of these are about 15 amps, because that's also what the BMSs are. They are also 15 amp BMSs, so four battery banks should give me 60 amps out of uh, the four batteries or into the batteries and that's a good number to not overdo anything that means that i will be discharging each of these cells with 1.5 amps uh, which is quite enough and when i have four of these banks um, i can stop and then i can do one more and that means that the overall amperage will drop down even further and when you do that you get even better results out of your battery bank so yeah a little bit about that so for all of you that wanted to see a little bit of house improvement and some battery banks well this video was for you please remember to give this video a like if you like this kind of videos otherwise thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye